everybody video here for you today happy st patrick's day to everybody who is celebrating thought i'd do a video in the spirit of things on ancient ireland but i wasn't quite sure what to do it on then i found a shareable lecture from the european association of archaeologists they go over some things that i've covered before in scotland and ireland and the uk and ancient america ancient enclosures this is one of them i covered in the ancient history news video right down here this is called naven fort this is maybe the fifth or sixth video I've made in the last month where I've included a clip from a lecture, but I think this fits very well with St. Patrick's Day. Guy talking very Irish about very Irish sites on my channel. This is perfect, but this lecture has a lot of good information, some LiDAR images. Sites are maybe 1,500 years old, but might be built on more ancient sites. This is one enclosure that is mentioned in this video. I'm going to share about 12 minutes out of a 19-minute video. I will leave the link for the full video below but european association of archaeologists makes our video shareable that's very cool this video has only been watched about 18 times i think it has good info i like sharing many different periods of history on my channel so here is that lecture hope you enjoy it and you all have a very fun saint patrick's day so my talk is a bit of a, a follow-on from gordon's earlier but here i'm going to talk more about the re-emergence of fortified settlement in Ireland around the time of 400 to 600 AD. And I'm going to specifically look into something that Paddy touched on earlier, which is the reuse and integration of earlier prehistoric sites um, and their integration into elite settlements at this formative period of Ireland. In Ireland, we have a huge amount of settlement evidence in the form of up to 76,000 recorded ring forts, thought to be up to 60,000. Um, but when we look more specifically at the excavated sites, so there are well in excess of 330 excavated examples. Um, and that really shows us that there's a much narrower chronology um, than just early medieval period. So usually what we see is Univalid ring forts, which are single bank and single ditch, are built around 600 to 900 AD, and then multivalid examples, um, which tend to be slightly larger, um, may originate slightly earlier, around the 4th, 5th century uh, AD. And when we look further back, we see that there's quite a considerable gap in enclosure building and occupation um, up until this period around uh, the 4th, 5th century AD. Um, all of our big hilltop sites tend to date to the Bronze Age, and over the course of the last seven or eight years, we've dated quite a lot of these. And rather than push that chronology forward, we've pushed it back into the Middle Bronze Age. Um, and then we look at other uh, internally ditched enclosures, these um, famous ceremonial enclosures that uh, are, are Iron Age in date. Uh, very few of these have been dated, um, but those that have, like Navenfort and Tara, tend to date around 400, 100 BC. And then, very similar to what we see in Britain, after about 200, 100 BC, we see an almost complete drop-off in fort building and occupation. So we have a period in Ireland uh, of about 500 years where we see very, very little in terms of enclosure. Uh, and then, pretty much at the exact same time, as in Scotland, all of a sudden we get these uh, much smaller forts, tend to be multivalid, and they tend to appear around 350-400 AD. So unfortunately very few of these have been excavated on any great scale, but those that have, like uh, Garons and County Cork, um, which has links with the uh, Uyek uh, uh, Mumen, which are uh, a royal sept of the Ovenuts. Um, and this enclosure has produced internal settlement with dates to around the 5th, 6th century AD. Um, but unfortunately, the actual enclosing elements of this have never been dated. When we look at these multivalid enclosures, trivalid, quadrivalid enclosures in general, we see this linked with Roman material uh, and then also at other sites, we see links with these much larger hilltop fortifications. So the Rathlis Synods, for example, uh, in Tara, 
We have um, the latest phase of enclosure, which is a quadrivalent enclosure linked with um, Roman material. And this probably dates around the, the third century AD. Uh, more recently, the Hill of War test excavation by Steve Davis produced um, some early medieval dates around four or 500 AD, but also showed that the enclosure is uh, surrounded by a much larger hill fort that's um, late Bronze Age in date. So even these newly constructed enclosures um, are being built um, either with reference to much larger hilltop settlements or with reference to earlier prehistoric uh, monuments and activity in the landscape. And we see this on a broader level at some of the famous um, Bronze Age hill forts in Ireland at Dunangus, for example, which is um, late Bronze Age in date. We see um, the inner rampart of the fort being heavily reworked at the beginning of the early medieval period, um, at which time they place two burials uh, at either side of the entrance to the fort. Uh, at Downpatrick, we see a, a large probable Bronze Age hill fort um, being reoccupied after a considerable period of silting up of the ditch. We see uh, iron um, working within the ditch and we have early medieval pottery. Uh, and then whenever there's small scale excavation at these sites, like at Nakana Kuig, Hahis Fort, Muha and Rahali, we see early medieval activity. But it's really not until we get to the very large scale excavations that we see really interesting uh, things going on. So Freestone Hill here, for example, in County Kilkenny. Um, again, this is a fantastic uh, Univalve hill fort, uh, most likely late Bronze Age in date. So no red carbon dates, but some of the material culture found underneath the bank in the ditch fill and within some of these uh, circular hut platforms are proper late Bronze Age um, artifacts. So we probably see a period here of about a thousand 1200 years where the site is abandoned, we see no activity, and then all of a sudden in the third, fourth century AD, we see uh, the construction of a 40 meter diameter uh, subcircular enclosure. And that delimited um, a considerable amount of Roman material. And when I say a considerable amount, I mean a very small amount of Roman material, but for Ireland, it's very considerable. <laughs> Um, so we have a Roman coin, 4th century AD, we have some toilet Im implements, a brooch, uh, and so on. And this has led uh, people like O'Floyne and Cahill to suggest that uh, Freestone Hill, the enclosure we see here, is actually a Romano-British rural shrine. Um, but uh, that's quite tentative, uh, and really what it's showing here, regardless of if it's a shrine or not, is elite activity within an ancient seat of power after a considerable period of inactivity. And we see a very similar picture at Clogher in, in County Tyrone. Uh, again, a, a probable Bronze Age hill fort um, that's been reoccupied in the sixth century when uh, a very large Univalis uh, ring fort is built. And this is associated again with Roman material and, and uh, Mediterranean material later on. Um, and is also used most likely as a penannular brooch workshop. And this site, um, like Ron's and, and uh, like um, Rathen Citizens, is probably associated with some uh, elite um, royal settlement as well. And even some of the traditional Bronze Age hill forts like Ratgal here, um, we see um, Roman Iron Age and early medieval activity. So, here again, we have 48 radiocarbon dates from here. Um, the majority of those are late Bronze Age, uh, but we do see uh, a, a large stone built castle right in the middle of this. And some of the excavation material produced some late Iron Age um, or Romano British material like glass beads, uh, a strap tag, um, bar toggle, and so on. Um, but looking more generally at this, we see um, a, a quite a number of these Bronze Age hill forts being reused as royal settlements, um, uh, most notably of which is the Grand of Alec in County Donegal, where you see this amazing Univalet ring fort, and that's surrounded by uh, a very, very large tri widely spaced, um, likely Bronze Age hill fort again. So as well as the archaeological evidence, we have the historical connections with some of these hilltop enclosures. Um, so for example, we have 
uh, the Commons of Lloyd, where Queen Maeve is supposedly ha to have camped um, in the Epic Baton. Fawn Hill is traditionally known as the burial place of Nile of the Nine Hostages. Um, Friarstown uh, Hill in County Limerick is associated with uh, Tara Lucra, which is um, uh, described in the Intoxication of the Ulstermen. Um, we have uh, Keshkarn here, which is surrounding a very large cairn and is linked with Cúcullin. And most notably, then we have Cahircan Ri, which is traditionally, or, or in the historical text, is seen as the um, settlement of Ku Ri, who is a, a, one of Cúcullin's main antagonists. Um, but as well as the historical connections, we do have um, some very nice archaeology linking this all together. And, and all of this comes together really at Navan Fort, where we see quite a lot of historical evidence suggesting this is an important uh, ancient royal site. And we see some evidence in the 4th to 7th century AD that this is being potentially settled by elites. Um, so we have some 4th century AD dates from the upper fill of the Site A ring ditch here. And we also have um, some uh, material culture that dates around 6th, 7th century AD. And I would suggest that there's probably uh, a lot more of these enclosures to be found. Um, here's the one we found earlier at the Rapid on Maze. Um, this is a site that's uh, very similar to some of the nuclear hill forts we see. Um, in Scotland, um, we have this craggy outcrop that's terraced. Um, excavations by Hodgkinson um, has shown that there are 8th century or 8th, 9th century um, earthworks surrounding the site. Um, and then some aerial photographs and some um, photogrammetry have shown um, some uh, large, probably ceremonial um, enclosure here on the um, hilltop next to it. And then we have very like Rahi Lamadra. Um, we have this Unibelt ring fort, and then we have a, a very slight, large old enclosure surrounding that. So, um, so I better leave it at that. I'm well over time. So thank you very much.